somebody take you? Oh, wait a minute. Don't kick so hard. It's a good thing she's not wearing spurs, you know? Now you go galloping up the stairs. Wait a minute. What kind of a western picture did you see? A horse doesn't go galloping up the stairs. That's not the stairs. That's a mountain. <laughs> I, I got a better idea the way we can end this picture. Get off. Yeah. Get off. Get off. I'll show you. In my picture, the horse gets up and goes over to the piano, see? <laughs> and he sits down and he sings. Oh, Daddy, that's silly. A horse can't sing. He can. Now, sit down over here. I'll show you he can. Now, you listen. <laughs> I'm old, faithful. We rode the reins together. I'm old. Faithful in every kind of weather when my roundup days are over, I'll be a pasture filled with clover for me, oh faithful pal of mine. <laughs> you like that? Well, if you ask me, horses are for riding, not for singing. <laughs> Is that so? Yes, until you can act like a decent horse, I'm not going to have anything to do with you. Well, that's gratitude for you. I wrecked my good suit and everything to please her. She doesn't like it, though. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Hello, Rusty. I just been to my scout meeting, Daddy, and guess what? We taught you how to ride your father up a mountain. <laughs> what kind of an answer is that? What kind of a question is guess what? Well, we've made all the preparations for our annual scout show, and guess what? Oh, well, now, don't tell me it's that time of year again. Yes, next week, and guess oh, what? I don't have to guess. I'm stuck with the MC job again. I know all about it. But, Daddy, um... Oh, Ross, this is ridiculous. Every year, it's the same thing. Get Danny Williams. Can't they ever think of somebody else? Look, why don't you rope some other sucker for a change? Well, Daddy, the committee decided... I know what the committee decided. Oh, now, Danny, you enjoy doing the show, and you know it. Yeah, honey, but why do they take me for granted? I'm a busy man, after all. I can get jobs. You know, my agent says I'm a sought-after entertainer. And the Scout Troop 44 annual show isn't exactly the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas. <laughs> I mean, I've done this thing for three years. Enough is enough. I know, Daddy. That's why we're not using you this year. Look, I've heard all about that, and I don't want to hear any more about it. Now, forget it. Now, get somebody else. You're not using me this year. That's <laughs> right. We got somebody else. You did? Yes. Well... It's about time. <laughs> you know, of all the ungrateful people in the whole world, <laughs> your scout troop takes the cake. Three years I've been working that show. I even organized it. And just like that, without any notice, you get somebody else and I'm dropped like a red hot penny. You just said you didn't want to do it. I don't so. want to do it. Then there's no problem. But I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Look, Russ, with me, when duty calls, I always answer. Now, you tell the scoutmaster that I am his. What for? He doesn't want you. What do you mean, he doesn't want me? Well, what I mean is, Mr. Sanders decided that it would be unfair to keep asking you year after year, uh, a busy, important man like you. Well, that's very thoughtful of Mr. Sanders, Russ, but... Uh, you tell him that I would love to sit back and relax and have somebody else do it, but I just cannot do it. I'm not built that way. What kind of a guy would I be leaving your kids out on a limb like that? I couldn't be that selfish. Couldn't you force yourself a little? <laughs> Rusty, that scout show happens to be my baby. I have nursed it through the years to where it's a good thing, a real high-level entertainment. Now, who are you going to get to take my place all of a sudden just like that? We got Jack Benny. <laughs> Which Jack Benny? The Jack Benny. The Jack Benny? The one with the big blue eyes? Bluer than the Pacific Ocean at sunset. <laughs> Mr. Benny told me so himself. And when did Mr. Benny told you so himself? When I went to his hotel room to ask him to do the show. You went to his hotel? <laughs> Oh, I see, I see. Well, no wonder. I thought you said you weren't using me this year. We're not. Just my name, huh? What do you mean? Look, Russ, you went to Mr. Benny and told him you're my son. 
You put the man in a terrible spot. What could he say? He said, I'll be delighted. <laughs> well, naturally. What else is he going to say to the son of a pal? I mean, if somebody close to him asks a favor, I would, I would say yes, too. Oh, this is wrong. All wrong, Russ. I can't allow it. But, Daddy... Listen, now, don't argue with me. I know what I'm talking about. Jack Benny is here on a vacation, Rusty. He's here to enjoy himself. You can't stick him with the scout show. Where's he stopping? St. Moritz. Okay. I'll go over there and tell him that he's off the hook. I'll do the show again. He already agreed to do it, Daddy. I know he agreed because he's a sweet guy, a pal of mine, an unselfish man who's put himself on a spot for me. No, Russ. Now, I'll make the sacrifice again and do the show this year. Tell your mother I'll be back in an hour. But, Daddy, we've already told the kids that Jack Benny is going to appear, and the tickets are selling faster than ever. <laughs> Didn't you always have a full house with me? Sure, but this year we don't have to give door prizes. <laughs> How's everything? Well, this is really a surprise. Well, I heard you were in town. I was in the neighborhood. I thought I'd come in and, you know, visit the proverbial visiting fireman, as it were. Well, I'm certainly glad you did, Danny. Hey, what a beautiful room you have here. You want to hear something? Uh, this is the bridal suite. <laughs> what would you be doing in a bridal well, suite? That's, I really couldn't get anything else. Oh. See, I don't mind it so much, except that every time the maid walks in, she throws rice in my face and says, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Well, sit down, Danny. Thank you, thank you, Jack. Would you like a drink? Yeah, I don't mind. Okay. What do you have? Oh, anything. I'll drink what you drink. Okay. Operator, give me room service, please. <laughs> Daddy, you look great. Feel fine, Jack. Room service? Uh, this is Jack Benny. Would you please send up a bottle of champagne? Yeah, room 314, yeah. The bridal suite, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, uh, the best, the best you have. I don't care what it costs. <laughs> yes, yes, this is Jack Benny. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> Daddy, you know what kills me? Just because I play a tight wad, you know, on television, everybody thinks I'm stingy. <laughs> you know, I only do it to get laughed. <laughs> yeah, uh, listen, room service. Yeah, send it up right away, will you please, the champagne? Oh, oh, by the way, do you give green stamps? <laughs> oh, oh, you don't, huh? Well, okay. <laughs> Mary, Mary saves them, oh. you know. <laughs> well, Danny, I'm delighted to see you. Thank you, Jack. Nice seeing you. Uh, frankly, I'm, uh, I'm just a little embarrassed. I don't quite know how to say what, what I've got to What do you mean, embarrassed? Go. Well, it's about my boy, Rusty. I, I understand he came by to see you. Oh, yes, your kid, Rusty. God, how he's grown. Yeah. I remember when he was about so big. You know? <laughs> I guess seeing him grow like that makes you feel older, doesn't it, Jack? Leave me out of it. He's your kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was talking about myself. Yeah. Anyway, when I heard that he roped you into doing the scout show, I could have fallen through the floor. I just felt Wait so a minute. Good. Wait a minute, Danny. He didn't rope me in. Huh? No, I'm, I'm very happy to do it. Oh, you are? Well, of course. <laughs> oh, well. That's you, Jack. I mean, you've got a heart as big as all outdoors. But, but look, Jack, I've been emceeing this show for three years, and even if it is a big drag, I'll do it again. You're, you're too sweet a guy to be stuck with a thing like this. Well, I mean, really, that's nice of you to feel that way about it, Danny. But you see, I've been doing shows like this in Beverly Hills. You know, I have a bunch of kids, too, called the Beverly Hills Beavers. Mm -hmm. And I do shows for them every year. And I, I love doing them. And they, and they love it, too. Well, I'm sure they do. Jack, but the kids in, kids in Beverly Hills are a lot different than they are here in New York. I mean, here in New York, our kids are very much advanced. They're sophisticated, you know. They go for the big city type of humor. You know. What am I, pot kettle? <laughs> no, no, Jack. I'm certainly not criticizing your comedy. I think you're wonderful. The whole world thinks you're wonderful. You're fabulous, sensational, in, in, a, in a slow sort of way. 
<laughs> Slow? Well, you know what I mean, baby. I've gotten them used to a different kind of show than you do. You know how I work, baby. I keep things moving. I keep up the pace. You know, keep going fast. Look, Danny, I can't work fast. I have to wait for laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come up here to discuss our respective styles, baby. I'm just trying to get you off the hook. That's all, baby. But I don't want to get off the hook. I want to do the show and stop calling me baby. <laughs> why would you want to do it if you don't have to? Well, why would you want to do it? You said yourself it's a drag. I know it's a drag, and it is a drag, but it's my drag. Go out and get your own drag and don't latch onto mine. <laughs> Look, Danny. Your kid came up to me and asked me to do the show, didn't he? And I am going to do it, and nothing you can say can stop me. And that settles it. Well. <laughs> That's my word. <laughs> Champagne you wanted, sir. The party's over. Take it back. <laughs> The manager told me to tell you there's no charge. No charge? <laughs> Sir, compliments of the house. Oh. Well, take it back and tell him to credit it to me on my bill. <laughs> they've been rehearsing and not one word from me. You'd think at least they'd, they'd call me and ask me to do the Sonny Boy number with Rusty. Oh, honestly, Danny, two big stars like you and Jack Benny fighting to emcee a show for a bunch of kids. Mm. You'd think it was the Palladium or Carnegie Hall. It's not the point. It's the principle of the thing. Daddy, will you play horsey with me? No, no. Why? Daddy's very upset today, darling. That why he's walking up and down? Yes, dear. <laughs> Can't he walk up and down on his hands and knees so we can play horsey? Honey, I told you your father's upset. Can't he be upset on his hands and knees? Look, will you cut it out? I'm nervous. So you're nervous? What? I'm a good rider. I can ride a nervous horse. Oh, get out of here. I can't understand why they want to leave out that Sonny Boy number. It was always the highlight of the show. Oh, well, if it isn't Benedict Arnold. Jack, Hello, Kathy. Won't you come in and sit down? Yeah, thank Here. you. Well, Danny, you know, I don't know. I've been thinking it over, the silly quarrel we had. For the last three nights, I haven't been able to sleep a wink. Now, all I want you to know is this, that your kid came to me to do the show. I didn't ask them. And when the boys come to me, I, I couldn't turn them down. But I mean, if it's going to start a big thing and a big argument between friends, why? I mean, if it's going to upset you, I'd just as soon stay out of the show and you do it. Isn't that sweet? Well. Look, I've been making a lot of unnecessary noise about this anyway. And besides, I, I ought to be tickled to death. I mean, the kid's getting a big star like you, and they'd rather have you instead of me. So let's just leave it that way, then. I knew you'd feel that way about it. <laughs> Shake. No hard feelings. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> no hard feelings, Jack. I'm glad. I am, too. Sit down. Sit down. Thanks. Hey. Danny. Yeah, yeah. I hear that that Sonny Boy number you do with your kid, Rusty, is always the highlight of every show. I hear it's terrific. <laughs> I was wondering when somebody was going to get around to mentioning that. <laughs> well, I was just wondering, huh? when I do that number... When... <laughs> <laughs> you are going to do my Sonny Boy number with Rusty? Yes, why not? Why not? It's my material and my son. If you're going to do the show, use your own material. <laughs> well, there we go again. Well, if it's going to start another big argument, why, we'll just cut the number out. Even if it does ruin the show. Isn't that sweet? 
I've never heard of such a thing. How do you like that? My son, my flesh and blood, is going to do Sonny Boy with somebody else. I not only lost the job as MC, but I'm out of work as a father, too. Oh, Danny, you mustn't feel that I way. I mustn't feel. How would you feel? I organized that show three years running. I MC'd it, and just like that, I'm left out of everything. Now, wait a minute. Hold it. Don't get so excited. You're not left out of anything. What? I mean, I talked it over with the Scoutmaster, and we think it would be silly. It would be a waste of great talent if you didn't do something in the show. Huh? So, after I do all my comedy, uh -huh. see, the great big scene that I do, you see, then, when I've got the audience all warmed up, you see, and ready for you, you come out and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I recite the Pledge of Allegiance. It's a wonderful piece of material. I know, but... but... the President of the United States does it all the time. If it's good enough for the President, it's certainly good enough for you. <laughs> yeah, but is that all you want me to do in the show? Well, if you'd rather lead the kids than the Boy Scout Pledge, why, I'll, I'll get them to let you do it. Isn't that sweet? Oh, shut up! <laughs> Aren't you dressed yet? No, no. Well, we'll be late for the show. For the last time, I'm telling you, I'm not going. Now, Danny. Look, I don't want to go. I mean, I've seen Jack Benny on the stage before. For half the performance, he plays Love and Bloom on a squeaky violin, and the other half, he just stares at the audience. <laughs> but, Daddy, all the other fathers will be there. That's right. How will it look? Rusty will be the only boy scout there without a father. Yeah, well, put on a pair of my pants and you go as his father. <laughs> I'm not gonna go there and do nothing. Well, you could have recited the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> For that, they don't need a comedian. But you gotta be there, Daddy. You just gotta. Why do I just gotta? Who cares if I'm there or not? Oh, Danny, everybody cares. They all know you, and they'll be looking for you. They're sure to ask you to get up and say a few words. Big deal. They're gonna ask me to get up and say a few words. Are you sure they'll ask me to get up and say a few words? <laughs> sure, Dad. Danny, I don't like that look in your eye. What <laughs> look? You just said they're gonna ask me to get up and say a few words. Huh. I got the words, too. What are you going to tell them? And I'm going to tell them what I think of them, that they're a bunch of ingrates. Daddy, you're not. For three years, three years I've been serving those kids. And you'd think they'd give me, give me something to show their appreciation. But no, they ignore me completely, boop me out. Well, I'll tell them a thing or two. A nice dissertation on gratitude. Oh, Danny, you wouldn't. I wouldn't, huh? You just wait and see. Down by the old Not the new, but the old <laughs> Not the river, but a stream Where I first Not last, but first Met you Not her, but you With your eyes Not your nose, but your eyes <laughs> Not green, but blue not gang, but gang. Um, two. Not three, but two. It was then. Not now, but then. I do. Not old, but new. <laughs> Not like, but love me. me too. Not false, but true. Kitties. You know, if I didn't have such adorable knees, I wouldn't work in this outfit. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, entertainment part of our show is over, and now I have a few acknowledgments to make that I 
Oh, my goodness, there's an audience. <laughs> I, uh, uh, first, I would like to introduce someone to whom Troop 44 owes a great and long-standing debt of gratitude. Mrs. Immigard Foster, <laughs> who made all the wonderful costumes for tonight's show. How about a big hand for Mrs. Foster? And now we come to a man who needs no introduction. Mr. Joe Meyerson, who printed all the books. <laughs> and now here is one of the most popular fathers of Troop 44, Danny Williams. <laughs> Danny, come on up here and say something. I'm glad you called on me, Jack, because there's a few things I'd like uh, to say minute, here Danny, tonight. Danny, before you talk, I'd like to tell a little story here. You see, Once, ladies and gentlemen, there was a lovable old ham, you see, <laughs> who had given unstintingly of his time and talents. And these children that he had taken care of for so many years, you know, and entertained, wanted to surprise him. Well, naturally, to surprise him, you'd have to keep him off the stage. Well, the only way you could keep a ham like that off the stage is to get a bigger ham like myself on. Huh? <laughs> Rusty, come on, come here. Daddy, I mean, Mr. Williams, <laughs> because you are a man who embodies the spirit of scouting and who has set a shining example for the fathers of scouts everywhere, we of Troop 44 are proud to present you with this 24 karat gold plaque. 24 characters. <laughs> it is inscribed to Danny Williams in grateful appreciation for his support from Troop 44. All right, big mouth, now say something. <laughs> All I can say is, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm uh, certainly glad you made that kind of short. It's a little drafty around the knees here. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm going to change this out. I'm getting a little bit too old for this kind of an outfit. <laughs> oh, you don't look so old, Mr. Benny. I don't? No. <laughs> no, not, not. Well, Rusty, how old would you think I am? I mean, just looking at me. Oh, I don't know. 37, 38. <laughs> well, Rusty, I mean, that's awfully sweet, really, but I, I'm a little older than that, you know. Guess again. 64. <laughs> so soon? Well, I hate to leave, too, Danny, but I gotta get the plane, you know. Look, buddy, I want you to know if I live to be a hundred, I'll never forget that beautiful surprise you engineered oh, with the kids. Oh, forget about it. Thank you a million. What do you mean, forget about it? If ever I can do anything to repay you, please let me know. Well, Danny, now that you brought it up, <laughs> there is something you can do for well, me. Well, just But, of course, you'll have to come to the coast. Anything you say. Well, you see... I also, as I told you before, I have the club, you know, the Beavers, yeah, the Beverly yeah, Hills yeah, Beavers, in which I put on shows for them. And mm -hmm. I don't know, they've never surprised me with a 24 karat anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it'd be kind of nice sometimes if during a show, if they would surprise me with a medallion or a plaque or nothing elaborate, a, a 14 karat something. <laughs> well, Jack, uh... I don't see where I, I fit in. Wouldn't the kids have to start this themselves? Well, they would if they would think about it. You know, the little rascal. <laughs> but, you see, if someone would give them a hint, like, for instance, what a lovable, nice, kind fellow I am. You see? Oh, I get you, I get you. You want me to drop the hint? No, no, you be the MC. I'll hint. <laughs> Of course. You see, I own the building where the Beverly Beavers hold their meetings, you see. So, if they don't want their rent raised, they'll surprise me. 